Today's readings are wonderful readings, uh, you know, and I would like to reflect on all the readings uh, this morning. Uh, last time when I went to the Holy Land, uh, I went to the church of uh, the Nativity, that is where Jesus was born. Uh, and when I saw the, the church, the entrance of the church, I was so surprised uh, because the door of the church, the huge church, that ancient church, but the door is very small. The door is this much short and you have to bend and go inside. That has two reasons. One is to avoid people going to attack. Earlier times, when the invaders came, many times this church was destroyed. And they went with the horses inside, you know. So in order to avoid, in order to, you know, stop the horses, the door is small. The second reason is, whatever and whoever you are, whether you are a king or emperor or prince, you must bend to the king of kings, Jesus, the Lord of lords. And this is what is today's reading. The first reading is speaking about Jesus. The birth of Jesus is not a plan done in nine months. The birth of Jesus had been eight centuries before Christ was born. It was told, in fact, through the prophets Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Micah that appeared in the, eighth, in the ninth century um, and then spoke about Jesus and about the Redeemer. Micah was 740 BC. But then what he's telling is that Bethlehem of Ephrata. Judah, which is south of, of Israel, the, the southern part, is the tiniest one. Insignificant you are. And you are the smallest clan of Judah. But from you, the king will come. He will be the shepherd of the people of Israel. And his greatness, there will be no end. And this is what prophet Micah is speaking about today. In the, in the gospel, in the, in, the, in the first reading. And so we are told about the origin of Jesus himself. He is telling the one who comes is from of old. He is from the ancient one. Meaning to say Jesus existed with God and he is God. And this is exactly parallel to the prologue of St. John the Evangelist. In his gospel, it starts with, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And so, who is this Word? Word is nothing but Logos, Jesus himself. And so the origin of Jesus is from of old. It's not uh, new or, you know, done in nine months' time. Well, Jesus came to do God's will, and that is what exactly is the, the letter to the Hebrews, the author is speaking about. The Lord has come to do God's will. Jesus says, offerings, sin offerings, and sacrifices, you, you took no delight, you had no desire. But you have prepared a body for me. That's how Jesus sacrificed his body. And his body was the purest of all. Only God could come down. Not any human being could take away the sin of mankind. Only God, because God could be only pure. God could be only perfect. And that's why it simply is, 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 is logical that God comes down and goes through our process and takes away our sin by dying, shedding his blood on the cross for mankind. And that's why he says, I have come to do your will, O God. Ece venio. And Mother Mary also, Ece Anchila. Here I am, Lord. Here I am. I have come to do your will. And so 
Mother Mary today we, we see her going to visit her cousin Elizabeth, beautiful thing. You know, she's happy, she's excited. And she he hears about, um, about Elizabeth uh, being visited by God. And he, she's pregnant for six months and she goes uh, for a distance of 90 miles walking to her cousin. Now, Mother Mary is called rightly the Ark of the Covenant. What is this Ark of the Covenant? It is mentioned wonderfully in second book of Samuel, chapter 6. You can open and read. Beautiful. The Ark of the Covenant was representing God. It was like a box. It was a box, uh, perhaps gold box, and it contained the two tablets of Moses, the commandments, the, the, the covenantal law, and then it had also the staff of Aaron and also contained a bowl of manna. And through the instruction of God, these were kept in the ark. And this ark was the representation of God. God lived. And so wherever this ark went, the holiness of God went with it. The blessing of God went with it. So wherever people moved, this ark was taken as the presence of God. And it is simply parallel to what Mother Mary is. Mother Mary is filled with grace. The angel comes and tells her, Hail Mary, full of, full of grace. You are full of grace. The Lord is with you. When God is with us, we will be filled with grace of God. That's the, that's the truth. And Mother Mary is a blessing. It's just, she is blessed. That's why Elizabeth says, Blessed are you among women. It should, we should be blessed only when God visits us. We are blessed. And Mother Mary is going to visit her cousin Elizabeth. So every time this Ark of the Covenant was taken by the people, they were jumping and celebrating with excitement, you know, uh, you know, banging the, the, the drums and jumping and singing when the ark was with the people. A lot of happiness, excitement. And that's what exactly happens when Mother Mary goes to her cousin Elizabeth. We heard this morning what happens when the greetings are heard by John the Baptist inside the womb of Elizabeth. He is jumping with joy. Yes or no? Yes or no? You heard this. Excitement. Excitement. I want to get to the point that each one of us are like Ark of the Covenant of God. Each of us are carrying Jesus with us. Am I right? Am I right? Every day we receive Jesus. Ark of the Covenant. We are Ark of the Covenant. And we need to be, ought to be blessing for people. Wherever we go, wherever we meet, people should jump for joy, excitement. Not many people jump when I meet them, you know. <laughs> but I should ask why people are not jumping and excited, getting excited, happy. We are Christians. We are carrying Jesus with us every moment we go. And we must transmit a joy to the others. This is what is important in our life. People should recognize us as the follower, as the disciple of Jesus. That we should manifest in our life. Our father, uh, founder father, Leo John Dehon, told us to be people oriented, to go to the people, to know the people, to live the life of the people, to get inside the life of the people. And that's what he told us to go. Go out from our sacristies, from our comfort zones. Go out to people, to be, meet people. And that's what exactly you and me ought to do. We need to go. That's why Jesus told, go to the whole world and proclaim the good news. Yes or no? Yeah. Go to the whole world, proclaim the good news. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. How many of you do? At least in our own context, we can do this, being missionary, speaking to people about Jesus. And people will be happy to see you. 
Let us ask the Lord grace for ourselves. Without the grace of God, nothing will change in our life. We need to have grace inside. And when you, if you are filled with grace, you will see the miracles happening in your life. Let us ask the Lord for this grace during this Holy Eucharist. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.